Hey there, fans. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, right? I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the new look that we've got here, trying to mix things up for the new coming year. So today I wanted to do something different with you guys. I actually got a chance to look at the new EarthSpark series uh, from Nickelodeons, and I wanted to uh, give you guys my uh, thoughts and reviews on it. So um, first of all, let's go ahead and jump into the fact that uh, it's up on the official uh, Transformers YouTube channel. You can catch the first two episodes on there. It's about 47 minutes long, so that's pretty cool. I don't have a lot of time to watch TV. I actually don't have, like, cable TV or anything like that. So imagine with, with work and, and family, the kids, the projects, I, I don't really have a whole lot of time to watch TV, per se. So um, I'm glad that I was able to watch it on the YouTube channel, check it out, listen to it, actually watch it while I'm while I'm working on animating for the project. So that was pretty cool. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now I do wanna make a warning. We are gonna have some spoilers in the event that you haven't seen it. So if you don't want to uh, listen to it, just go ahead and uh, you know click off now, go check it out and then come back. But uh, if you have seen it or you don't care about the spoilers, uh, stay and watch, right? Uh, overall, so uh, where do I start? Um, as many of, I'm sure many of you guys know that there's a new animated series called Transformers Earth Spark, right? It's on Nickelodeon, and what I can tell you is apparently this is a continuation from the 1980s cartoon, um, and that was a shocker to me. I actually didn't know that. I, I didn't read anything about this uh, this animated uh, series. Uh, I saw the uh, trailer. To be honest with you, I was not impressed by the trailer. Um, it looked it looked very childish, uh, you know, really similar to the Cyberverse, even more childish than R.I.D. As much as R.I.D. was childish, it was even it was dropped down even further for the Cyberverse. And now it's maintaining that same level um, uh, with this particular series. So overall, I don't like it. And here's what I, I don't personally understand. Um, like, we're supposed to be smarter at this point. Like, technologically speaking, we're more advanced, so kids are smarter. I see that within my own kids. I can't help them out with their homework because their homework is so much more than what I had when I was a kid, right? So if we're supposed to be smarter and we can handle more and so on and so forth, why do the cartoons seem like they're just dumbed down? Like, like I feel like a lot of cartoons nowadays are... They have a target audience, but they treat the target audience like if they're not intelligently capable of what we were intellectually capable way back in the 80s. I mean, come on, let, let's be real. The 1980s uh, cartoon was not very, very childish. It had its moments here and there, but it was like most cartoons. You had G.I. Joe, you had Thundercats, you had Voltron, you had He-Man. You had all these cartoons that were, I mean... I mean, granted, it had its it has its faults, right? As far as story goes and and plot holes, and it was not concise when it comes to story. However, it wasn't treated like like you know kindergarten stuff, and that's what I feel like with a lot of these cartoons nowadays. They're just that's what they're treated as, and and it, I think that you're doing the you know number one, you're doing uh, your higher audience, your your more uh, mature audience a disservice, but you're also I think I think. You're also, they're also doing a disservice to the younger younger audience because it's like, you guys aren't intellectually capable of handling complex plot holes and storylines. I, I, I kind of disagree with that because it's because of those things that you actually learn how sto good story writing, your imagination flows more, you're able to connect these dots and the, these aha moments happen when you have these things. I think, and I'm biased here, but Transformers Prime was like a perfect mixture of that, right? You had your... Uh, comedic humor you had your certain childish things because we're following teenagers right the visuals were great and so on and so forth so again i i i'm not buying this uh this this childlike approach that hasbro keeps taking towards the transformers so overall i'm not impressed uh why am i not impressed to be quite honest with you the character modeling again we're going back to this boxy look and I get it from a modeling perspective, it's easier to model in, in cubes and squares than it is to do these complex designs of having metal 
wrap around uh, certain body parts, right? We're talking about transformers, they're humanoids, right? So it's much more complex to model like a piece, a component of the vehicle to wrap around the rib cage, wrap around the shoulder, the forearms, you know, and so on and so forth. I get that, but again, I feel like we're just going backwards. I feel like I'm watching the same old stuff just in 3D, you know, that's how I feel, right? So I'm not, I'm not a fan of the boxy stuff. Like, for instance, in the Netflix series, that was one of my biggest gripes. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm watching, you know, 80s stuff uh, just in 3D. I did, however, like the Beast Wars aspect of the Netflix. I thought the, the modeling on that was really nice. It looked like an upgrade from the 90s Beast Wars. And that's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm looking at a Transformer series, especially that one that seemed to be geared towards the mature audience versus the younger audience. So I, I, it is what it is. But... There you go. Uh, but what I specifically disagree with or dislike about uh, the modeling is the faces. My goodness, Optimus Prime's face looks absolutely horrible. As you can see here in this particular uh, video that I'm playing right now, it's just like, wow, I can't, I can't believe that, you know, there's an art director and says, yeah, that looks good. I like that. Both Prime's face and Megatron's face are absolutely horrible and I do not like it. Uh, the other thing that I don't seem to like is this new trend and it started happening if I'm not mistaken could have started I understand why it happened in R.I.D. You had uh, Bumblebee who was the leader of the Earth group and uh, Heck Optimus Prime gave him uh, You know authority right he respected his authority so whenever the two uh, Lions if you will bumped heads there was a natural back and forth, but it was never in disrespect you know you know, uh, Bumblebee really was like, hey, man, this is my team. I respect you. You're you're the leader. But you even said that it was my team. So how do I lead them if you're trying to lead? So there was and it made sense that conflict. Right. It, it's hard when you're in a leadership role for you for you to give up that leadership to somebody else and just let them run with it while still being a part of the group. That's, uh, you know, uh, immensely difficult to do. So it made sense there. Ever since the Netflix series, it just seems like like we're going down a path to just be disrespectful towards Optimus Prime, which is absolutely nuts. I don't like it one bit. We saw that with Alita One in the Netflix series. She was questioning his uh, his leadership on every single level, even to the point where she was disobeying him. And now you've got uh, and I don't I don't remember the 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 character's name, but it's the mom of the 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 children. Uh, she seems to have a gripe with Optimus Prime and and she's, you know, being a little bit confrontational with him and and kind of standing her ground. So uh, all while having this really immense friendship with Megatron, it's like, wow, he's like, you know, yes, he's like the guy I've always worked with. I love to work with him. Almost bringing Megatron up to a superhero level or to a hero status. And, and Prime is just like, uh, whatever, Prime, you know. I really don't like that. That just isn't sitting well with me. So um, I don't. I, I, I don't like that that path that now we're seeing in two separate series. Um, it, it just doesn't sit well with me. Imagine having like any cartoon where you have a lead hero, and and I mean, come on, Prime is Prime. You know, every time Hasbro does something to Prime, they suffer for it, like killing him off, right? So I, I'm just not big on that. I think Prime. Is should be unchangeable, unmovable. Uh, everybody looked up to him. Like for instance, in the Prime series, everyone looked up to him. Even people that didn't know him heard about him. Um, like Wheeljack, for instance. Like yeah, I heard about Prime, but you know what? All leaders are all the same. And then he got to work. And it was like whoa, this guy's definitely not like that. This guy's the real deal when it comes to leadership, right? So I, I'm just not not a big fan of disrespecting Prime in any which way. To be honest with you, I think I've shared it with you guys. If I was a hero, I would want to emulate Optimus Prime. So it, it bothers me that he's being disrespected. And it also bothers me the fact that he kind of goes along with it too. You know, one thing that you cannot have if you are a, a leader or a general is having disrespect amongst your ranks. There's, hey, if you've got something to say where we're not agreement, you, you know, you take it offline, right? You step aside, you talk it out, but you never disrespect your superior in front of peers or in front of their peers or anybody. That's just something you don't do. In, now it's not something you do in military. It's not even something that you're supposed to do with your parents, right? Uh, if you like, or even within co-parenting, right? You never like two parents should never disagree with each other and fight with each other in front of children, right? So what you do is when you have an issue 
that you don't agree with, even though the parent, the other parent may have said something, you take after afterwards, after the kids are asleep, you take the parents aside and say, listen, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about what happened. You know, I, I didn't fully agree. I backed you up, but I didn't fully agree with it. And I wanted to see more. You talk it out, but you never disrespect authority in front of subordinates. It's just bad, 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 bad. Anyhow. So apparently this story is a continuation of the 80s. And I that doesn't sit good with me either. Because for all the things that I've already mentioned, it's at what point did Megatron stop becoming a villain? And I'm sure they'll get into that as the episodes progress. But we're already starting off with him being a good guy. I'm not, I, that doesn't sit good with me with Megatron being a good guy. Why? Megatron has always been a villain. Unless we go into the comics and we talk about the Shattered Glass. That makes sense because we're talking about an alternate reality. That's not what I mean here. What I mean is Megatron's a hero. When have you ever seen a villain, a vi like a certified psychopathic power-hungry villain dictator become a, a hero all of a sudden? Yeah, I had a change of heart and I'm just going to be a hero. You know, I I've never seen that in history whatsoever. I mean, Joseph Stalin, uh, you know, went against Adolf Hitler in World War II, but it was because Adolf Hitler attacked him after they had formed a treaty that they wouldn't. So it's not like Ad uh, Joseph Stalin suddenly became a hero or a good guy. So historically speaking, this doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. And I know this is fiction. I know it's just cartoon, but it still doesn't make sense. It's still, it, there's got to be something to quote Shockwave. There's got to be something logical, right? And it just doesn't seem logical that Megatron would all of a sudden become a good guy based on the recap that we were given by the kid's father, right? So out of out of all the fighting that happened, right, it got to a point where Optimus Prime wanted to destroy or, or made the decision to destroy the space bridge. And based on the destruction of the space bridge, that kind of made everything okay. I guess Megatron realized that, you know what, it's not worth fighting for anymore. And you know what, I'm going to go ahead and be a good guy. What? That made no sense whatsoever. So literally, you could have destroyed the space bridge back in the 80s and avoided all of this from happening the way that it did. Again, that makes absolutely no sense. Not only that, and this is something that I'm seeing nowadays. I, I saw it in the Marvel films with like Spider-Man, uh, the, the last Spider-Man movie. I, I forget what it's what it's called. But um, and, and there's been other ones where it seems like we're trying to save villains as opposed to vanquishing defeating them, imprisoning them. It's like we want to save their soul or something like that. There are some villains, like we're not talking about a petty thief type thing where they can be redeemed. We're talking about like epitomes of evil. Those can't be redeemed, right? So why are we trying to, why are heroes trying to save them instead of defeat them is beyond my knowledge. So here's here's where I'm going with this. You've got Megatron who for eons, remember this is these are battles that have gone for eons. How many people or how many Autobots have died at the hands of Megatron, either by the hands of Megatron directly or just by the words of Megatron, meaning giving orders to the Decepticons to terminate Autobots on site with prejudice, right? So all of a sudden, all of those deaths are just nowhere. It doesn't matter anymore because, hey, you know, we, we got Megatron now. He's a good guy. He just, I mean, at what point aren't people supposed to answer for their crimes? I mean, this guy's committed a, a bunch of war crimes. They quoted, um, I forgot which, uh, it was one of the Decepticons when he's getting ready to be, I guess, dissected by uh, the, the mad scientist. He's like, hey, you're not supposed to torture me. Those are rules rules of engagement from, from the war of the Autobots, right? So apparently Autobots have rules, right? Just like in, in normal human life, there's uh, military rules, right? You're not supposed to torture and so on and so forth. Um, so if you have someone that committed crimes against humanity, you hold that person accountable and be it that Megatron has committed massive amounts of crimes against the Autobots, I would imagine they would have held them accountable, but that's not what we get that based on this first episode, none of this makes sense. And none of this is sitting well with me. Usually when you have somebody that flips from being a good guy to a bad guy, there's a catalyst something happened. You can't tell me it was just the destruction of a space bridge. There had to be something that was bigger than, than the ideology of the, of the person or a life changing event, like your near death or something like that. For example, going back to Transformers Prime, at the end of Predacons Rising, 
Megatron does not become a good guy, but he abandons his quest and his lust for power. Why? Because he finally got the experience of what it was like to be oppressed and he didn't want to oppress somebody else. That makes perfect sense. Again, not that he's changed and become a good guy and now he's fighting for good. That's not what happened. He just said, you know what? Now I, I've been in the shoes of, a, of people that are, or of, of beings that have been oppressed and I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna get oppressed. That, made, that makes perfect sense to me and I like that switch, it was subtle. This isn't, that's not what happened here. Number one, we don't know what really took place. All we know is that he made the switch. So it just doesn't make sense. Now, based on the backstory, it seems like this was years ago. Uh, you had, a, you, in the flashback, you have mom fighting alongside the Autobots and she's even fighting along Megatron and, and the baby girl or the little girl, I, again, I, I'm not good with their names. I don't remember their names. But the little girl seemed to be like a toddler at the time based on that flashback. So it's been a couple of years. So when Megatron turned, who who then became the villains? It Was it the Decepticons still? Because I, I think it was Swindle. I'm not sure if it was Swindle or not. Um, but they said they that, uh, I'll, listen, I'll be loyal to you. I'll follow you no matter what side you're, you're fighting on. So if that's the case, why didn't those Decepticons turn? Okay, who were the Decepticons following now again none of that is being answered in these first two episodes so i'm 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 hopeful that they'll get answered further down the road and i'm sure they will um but it, it's a big question mark and it just doesn't make sense is is soundwave uh the guy the leader now is is starscream the leader now is shockwave the leader now we don't know we can only assume and i'm sure that they'll, they'll touch on that to further explain but right now it's just not making sense to me and, and the main reason why it's not making sense is because of that switch. Now, if you tell me that the Decepticons betrayed Megatron, like let's say, let's say it was Shockwave, let's just speculate. Shockwave's the leader. And Shockwave shot Megatron in the back and, uh, and, um, and he took over leadership of the Decepticons, right? Then it makes sense that Megatron would maybe side with the Autobots, but again, I can't see a character switch of going from absolute pure villain to absolute pure hero now, because that's the interaction. That's what I get based off of the interaction with the human mom and Megatron. He's a hero, you know, terror in the sky, honor in the ground or whatever it was. This is a ridiculous line. Anyhow, moving forward, uh, let's get into the villain. Uh, the, the villain was really lame. I'm sorry. Uh, when I compare him to Mech, let's say Silas from Mech, Silas was threatening. Silas had a gang. Silas's gang was based on technology, advancing technology. They wanted to acquire technology because they figured whoever has the most advanced technology has the edge in the game of whatever game that they're playing, right? Whether it be international terrorism, which is what it looked like they were involved in, and so on and so forth. This guy, Mandroid, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't get what he's trying to do. Apparently, he's able to mind control Decepticons, okay. Uh, he's got his own robotics, okay. Uh, but interestingly, he, 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 um, he amputates one of the uh, Decepticons' arms and then he puts it on himself, right? So kind of like where Mech, after learning about the Transformers or Silas learning about the Transformers, he wanted to actually obtain the technology to make his own transformers what i loved about this was that you can see the progression the progression went from getting just technology to getting now cybertronian technology and creating your own uh transformer and then it went from that to now fusing uh cybertronian technology with human in order for him to uh reach that level of um of godhood, if you will, that he wanted to reach, right? He was a titan. He said it was a titan amongst titans or something like that, or a human amongst titans. So we can see the progression of where where he went. And uh, and what he, what they did was they surgically fused him to break down, right? Because of the um, injuries that he had sustained. And that was another thing. So they went from creating a, a Transformers to creating a Transformer that they can actually control. So again, you could see the progression. So in this case, we go from, hey, I got a Decepticon, I amputated his arm, and I put it on my arm. Now, I got questions. Did he amputate his own arm? Kind of like when Megatron, remember when he amputates his, his arm to put on the uh, arm of Solus Prime, 
right? He had to do that. And because they're machine, I guess they're able to take it out, put it back in. But now this is a human, uh, you know, I don't know, but uh, once you, your arm is amputated, you ain't getting it back, right? So we can see his arm, now it's massively big in contrast to his body, and he's kind of got to drag the arm. Uh, first of all, that's not humanly possible. That arm's got to weigh a, a ton. You know, uh, it's Cybertronian, it's filled with wires and so on and so forth. So again, unrealistic. I get it, it's a, it's a cartoon, not going to go that far into the rabbit hole. But he's able to move his fingers. If you notice, there's a moment where he's like typing something, and I think he's able to open and close his fist. So now my question is, is his arm in there and he's got like attachments and wires that mimic his finger motion, you know, like sensors, um, you know, because that would make more sense versus him surgically putting on the arm. That doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, but anyhow, I guess we'll, we'll learn uh, as we go along. Um, and then the final thing that I really wasn't too keen on was the whole Terrans thing. So now you've got Transformers that are somehow born here, I don't understand that entire scene that took place in the cave. Um, I'm sure that we'll get more explanation into it. Uh, it's something new in the Transformers universe, I guess. I, I don't think I've ever seen any anything like that before where Transformers are born here. Um, how did they get there? How did that thing get there? What was all that stuff that took place? I really don't know. Um, but overall, like I said, I am not impressed. Uh, now, some of you guys may think, well, you're just being biased because you like Transformers Prime and so on and so on. Listen, to be honest with you, I wasn't crazy about the Transformer des Transformer Prime designs. I said this before. It reminded me too much of the Michael Bay stuff. But after seeing the first episode, I was blown out of my seat. I was like, this is phenomenal. This is great. I love the designs. It worked well. I like the overlapping metals because it, you know, it just makes more sense into having this car and having them have be you know have this humanoid look that the metal would bend and wrap around in certain areas and so on and so forth so you get more of that less of that boxy look and more of the humanoid look and so on and so forth so um so yeah guys I, i'm not trying to be biased i'm just trying to give you guys my opinion on what it is i'm gonna keep watching it of course um uh to get more information uh, as i go along I did not watch Cyberverse entirely. It was just way it got way too childish for me, unfortunately. So I could not finish watching it. I, I just finished watching Robots in Disguise, the fourth season in its entirety. Um, so you know, will I will I watch the whole thing? I don't know. It depends how much it holds my interest. Um, so we'll see, guys. That's my review. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Maybe you guys liked it. Let me know what you guys liked about it, what you guys didn't like about it. Again, it's everybody's opinion. Everybody's entitled to it. I'll tell you one thing I did like was the smoothness of the animation. I would expect no less at this point, especially from Nickelodeon. So that is something that, that is a positive for me. I don't want to completely dump on this series. Um, but uh, but overall, honestly, my rating right now is, is a 2. Guys, that's it for now. Take care. I'll see you guys next time. Till all are one. Peace out.